Welcome to Speed Tree 10. We've reached the two digits and to celebrate this, we've decided to we redesign the whole GUI of the app. I'm really happy to present to you the improved and elegant look of the new modeler. This will be a quick overview of all the new menus and options, so have fun visiting with me, the new modeler. Here we have the new open window dialogue. You already saw that in 9.5, but I thought it would be a good idea to go over it again. So when you click on new tree, you have access to our samples that have no textures, but it can be a great way to start your, your tree. There are already some generators placed in them. Then we have the samples for games. All the models were optimized for engines, so they have LODs, wind. It can be a great way to learn about how to set that up. Then we also have VFX models. Those are for non real time renderers. So they are not optimized. They're very heavy, but very pretty. <laughs> we also have mushrooms in there. And then we have the learning space. I think this is super interesting if you have a question and you're not sure how to go about something. So here you're going to learn more about our photogrammetry process, how to use forces. We also have our new samples about rules. We have both of them. Go check that out. We also have custom spines so you can import your own hero mesh and add curves to it, which is super cool. We have the new vines generators too. We have two samples showing you how to use that. And in the line of what is new, we also have the new reference generators, which are really useful if you want to declutter your generation window. And we also have link to our tree library, our video tutorials and our documentation. First, I'll open one of our samples. I'll take the forest one. Here we have a tree. So you see it's looking kind of the same, but different at the same time. We move the stuff around. Now the three main mode, generator, node, and freehand are in the top left. We used to have those three little icons that look like a tree. Now we have those ones that are more representative. <laughs> so you just need to Click on the node mode to access the mode where you can edit parts of your tree individually. Then you can click on the freehand mode to access everything that we consider fast modeling. So the freehand tool, bending, adding displacement as well. And we have the new trim tool. We also have the new vertex editor for the custom curves I was talking about. The next menu are not new, so we have add, then visibility, and then we have the season one where you can slide the seasons. Then you have the LOD tab. There you'll find resolution for VFX samples, and you can activate dynamic LOD if you want to bring that into an engine. As a reminder, if you want to do that, you should convert your batch leaves into regular leaves. Then we have the scene object menu where you can add or select forces or collision objects, scene cameras, and also projectors and mesh helpers that are really useful to add curves to your custom meshes. You'll find those same little buttons at the bottom of the generator window too. It's really useful when you want to bake a lot of textures to have the camera options right there. Then we have the wind menu. If we continue down the right, we have the light option. There we have the presets. I really love the new neutral one, which is super useful to see the colors before exporting your object. You can change the shadows and then bake the ambient occlusion. You can also do that there. Then we have the render modes. You can see the wireframe or the wind waves or check if your saturation is all right, for example. Then we have the show options where you can decide to hide leaves or fronds or any part of the tree. Then the gizmos and then we have the zoom. Then the collision that you already know. So it's a great way to optimize your tree to remove leaves that are touching each other. And we also have the new shade pruning. 
So this is a pruning that is based out of the AO. So all the leaves that are more in the center of the tree will be removed. So it's a great tree to remove a, a ton of polygons and have actually a better silhouette because it will look less dense in the middle of your tree. Then we can move to the, to the different panels. First, we have the material one. So it's pretty much the same. The one that really changed is the cutout mesh editor. So let me just open that. Not with that mesh though, because <laughs> that's an object, imported object. So if I choose another one and then edit, I can choose the proper texture and there you have it. So this is the new uh, edit cutout window. You have all the same options, but displayed differently. So it's more ergonomic for you. Let me just remove everything. So we, you have the option to add points as always. Then you can select some of your points and move them together. You can remove points with the eraser. Then we have the mirror option. If you just want to do one side, if you have a symmetrical object, and then you have the option to surround your, your texture with all points that are generated. Then we have the straighten tool. Um, so it's the same as it was and you can make it straight and then revert. Then we have anchors. So the first one is to add your anchors. The second one is to remove them. And the third option is to revert everything. Then we have the paint, mac, mac, paint <laughs> mask option. Let me just add points here so you can see if I paint the mask, it's going to remove the vertices in that area. You can change the size of your brush and you can erase your area using that button here. So I can remove my mask if I just paint over there. Then we can paint vertex colors and this is where you can change the color. Then we have sections for leaflets. So you can paint your different section. You want to move uh, separately when you have a front, for example. Then you can clear and fill. And the way you can assign your new cutout the same way you did before. One new panel we have here is the roll one. This is where you you can well, write your own rules. Let me just open a sample so that has some written. So if I go into the learning section, I can open one of our rule samples. So you see there all the script is written. So you can take a look at it if you want to write your own or we'll have some models available on our library as well. Now let's take a look at the workspace improvement we did. So you can now take any of the panels and dock them wherever you want. So you see you have those little options that appear whenever you take a window. So you can dock them wherever. And you can also change screen if you want. I think by default the timeline is there. But you could take the material window and put it over the generator one if you want. Whatever works best for you, you can now do which is super useful. And then if we take a look at the properties window, if you slide it wide enough, you'll see that you have two columns appearing. It can be very useful if you want to see more properties at once. And if you make it really narrower, then you lose the, the wheel if you don't need it. Then we can take a look at the export mesh options. So we have two options, games or VFX. See, if we go into games, you see you have all those presets. You can also make a custom one if you want to make it faster whenever you export the same kind of things over and over. And the same goes for the properties for this one. You can make it into two columns if you want to have a look at all your properties at once. Then you can choose your format at the top. And for VFX, it's the same. You have all the presets. You can make a custom one. You have the export format there and then all the properties you had before. One last thing I would like to cover is the new arbitrary scale option we have. So if you realize that your, ski your scene is not at the right size, you can go into tools, then arbitrary scale. 
And this tool is really amazing because it's going to scale your collision, your your properties, your values, and everything together. So it stays coherent and it doesn't break your model, which is awesome. <laughs> so this is one of the new ways you can scale. Uh, we also have some options to change your units, either directly in the modeler on or when you're exporting. So this concludes my overview of the modeler. Uh, I didn't go into too much specific. I will release tutorials about how to use the, all the new tools and features I've talked about. So stay tuned for that. And I hope you appreciate as much as us the new look. Have a great day.